Hi, it's Tom again, and in this video what we're going to do is uh, create a multi-purpose event handler. Um, what I mean by that is uh, in our application here, we're going to create an event handler that could potentially handle more than one different event coming out of our class. So um, uh, in order to do that, we should probably think about what kinds of events are going to happen in our, uh, in our DICE class. And pretty much uh, the event that we have right now is rolled snake eyes, but we can sort of say, well, there's all kinds of different special roles that can happen uh, here in the in the role method. Um, to illustrate this, what I've done is I've actually created you don't you don't have to add to this, but just let's have a little look at it. Um, a enumeration called role slang names. We'll open that up. I had to Google this. I don't play a lot of dice games, but. Um, apparently, there's uh, there's these slang names for various different roles if you're playing like uh, uh, a dice game like craps or whatever. Um, any rate, uh, so yeah, we know snake eyes is a pair of ones. Uh, a one and a two is called ace deuce, for example. There's the idea of a, a hard uh, roll, uh, which is uh, a hard roll is something you get with a pair, like a hard four is a pair of twos, as opposed to an easy four which would be a three and a one and or a one and a three, that kind of thing. Anyways, we've defined, or what I've done is I've defined all these different role slang names. Now we're not gonna have events for every single one of these that'll be overkill, but we'll pick out a couple. Um, so for example, we'll pick out, we'll deal with uh, box cars, which is a pair of sixes. And we'll deal with a natural, which is any combination that uh, uh, adds up to seven. All right. Now in our previous uh, event handler uh, delegate, <coughs> excuse me, for snake eyes handler, we didn't have any arguments. Um, there wasn't any sort of extra information or any real information that we were sending along with the uh, with the event. Um, and so this is this was okay for that purpose. But now that we're going to be defining sort of more. Um, uh, uh, we want to have more information that we send along with the event so that the uh, application programmer has a little bit of flexibility in how they handle them. So specifically what we're going to do is we're going to create a class uh, and this class is going to be called roll, dice roll event here I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it uh, dice roll event argument so well, let's open up that .cs file okay um, alright so currently this is been a warning actually since I began the tutorial but currently the dice roll event arguments is a new class that we are uh, inheriting from uh, event arguments so the event arguments base class is uh, uh, a base class that's used for this specific purpose we're creating an object that's going to contain some information uh, that will be handy for when we uh, we actually fire off event so uh, what I've defined as uh, handy information in this case is a message. Okay, so our dice roll event arguments has a, uh, a message uh, property, an underlying field uh, called my message. Uh, it only allows to, to get the message, not necessarily set it. Um, the message is going to be set in one of two constructors. So one way of, of setting that message is by uh, the programmer raising the uh, uh, event specifying uh, a string. So we'll have a constructor with a string. So it's public, the name of the class. Uh, I've called my parameter message, string message. I've got a default saying no message sent, so I can use this as a default constructor if I want. And then all I'm going to do is set, uh, you know, my message to the parameter message. Okay, so pretty straightforward, and and not necessarily. Um, not necessarily very unique to a dice roll. Um, the second constructor I'm going to add, and this is just for um, just for flexibility for the application, or sorry, for the people using this uh, uh, using this class. A little tongue-tied today. I apologize for that. Is I'm going to actually base it on the role name enumeration that I just showed you. So let's have a look at this. Okay. So again, it's public the name of the class and instead of a string I'm actually using my role names enumeration called a name. So what I want to do is I want to initialize the uh, message, I'm going to say my message uh, just like before 
but obviously I'm not making I'm making it equal to a string eventually, but it's the the actual enumeration dot two string. So um, this will very quickly allow the um, uh, allow the programmer using this this class to specify you know um, go back here snake eyes or ace deuce or hard eight or yo eleven or whatever. Okay, um, all right, and sort of standardize it a little bit. So that's my that's my actual uh, class. I'll just save that. I'll just do a build there to make that warning go away. All right. So again, the purpose of this uh, objects of this class is to be able to send some information along with the event so that the um, application programmer can look at these dice roll event arguments and decide sort of what to do in their event handler. Okay, so next I'm going to go back to the dice class. We're going to add just the two more, um, two more of events. Okay, so um, in class dice, underneath events, uh, where I had the snake eyes handler uh, event defined, I'm going to define two more. Now this time I'm not going to create my own delegate for this. I'm actually going to use the event handler generic delegate. So I'll show you how to do this. Make a little bit of extra room there. So it's public event, and then event handler, and then uh, angle bracket. So event handler, again, is, a, I, I would tend to call it a template, but it's a, uh, a generic delegate. And the type that this generic delegate uh, needs to know about is what type of event arguments do we want? So I want these event argument, uh, event argument class that I just defined, okay? So that's gonna create an event handler, um, or sorry, use this generic. Um, I'm going to call it, this one is going to be for rolled, uh, I don't know, I'll call it rolled seven, I suppose. Okay. Um, so it, it just, and instead of creating my own delegate that uh, the application programmer is going to be ne not necessarily familiar with, um, they are familiar with the generic event handlers, how they're normally set up. Um, so this is just a little bit more intuitive for, for other programmers to use. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually just going to copy it. Okay. Um, instead of rolled seven, though, let's say, what did I say before? I think roll 12 is, uh, is what we'll call that event. Now, of course, for consistency's sake, I should probably go back and sort of Re, uh, redo how I'm approaching rolled snake eyes, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that in there so that you have that uh, for, for you know, that comparison later on. All right, so let's uh, scroll down to uh, the roll method and we'll modify it to uh, handle those uh, other two events. Now, the, it's, it's going to basically follow the same pattern as, um, you know, rolled snake eyes. So let's add that. Okay, I added a lot of code there. You may want to pause, but uh, so um, the same way here with uh, rolled snake eyes. Uh, if it was not null, meaning there was a, an event handler and the value was two, I call my rolled snake eyes event handler. Same thing with seven, rolled seven. So if I rolled that there is a rolled seven event handler and the value is seven, then I want to call the event handler, and I haven't coded that yet. And then otherwise, okay, it's so another else if if the uh, uh, roll 12 event handler is um, been supplied by the application programmer and the value is 12, I want to call their event handler in that particular case. Okay, so let's code this. Um, we'll deal with rolled seven first. So I want to call the event handler defined for rolling a seven, and I also want to indicate that it's a natural. So it'll be rolled seven, Okay, the first, as soon as I, I do that, you can see the uh, template for event handler. So the first thing is an object, uh, which it's called sender. So um, this is kind of the standard format. Um, the object that I want to send back, okay, is this object. So it'll be this. And then the dice roll event arguments, um, that's that extra information that I want to send back. So that'll be a new object. So I'm going to say new dice roll event arguments. And I'm going to uh, choose one of my two constructors. So here's my string message, no message sent. Excuse me. And then I can also use my role slang names, uh, slang names version. That's the one that I'm going to use. I'm going to say uh, role names, role slang names, I should say, role slang names dot 
uh, natural. Okay, close that off, close that off, close that off, semicolon. So just to recap, if there has been a uh, event handler defined for rolling a seven, and the value is a seven, I'm gonna call that event handler that the application programmer is wired. I'm gonna pass it this object and some new role event arguments that indicate that the role is a natural. Oh, I've got one too many um, brackets there. Okay, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna you know, even just copy and paste it a bit and modify it. Do the exact same thing in, in, if there's a 12. Okay, so of course it's not rolled seven anymore. It'll be rolled 12, and it's not role names natural anymore. Okay, the that is known, normally known as boxcars. I suppose I've learned in doing this tutorial. Okay, so there's my my new events. Now, of course, if I if I go ahead and run this, I'm not going to see anything different than I had before because I haven't actually wired. I don't have an event handler for those two new events, so I'm, I'm still just seeing the snake eyes ones. So I'm going to go back to uh, my program class where I have my application defined. And uh, first off, we'll define uh, a, an event handler that will handle these two events. So one handler to define the two events. Let's scroll down. And you can see I've got this started off, uh, at least the comments. A multi-purpose event handler. This is where we're going to start doing our coding. So as the application programmer, I want to define an event handler that's going to handle all of the special roles, whether it's uh, uh, rolling a 7 or rolling uh, 12 or, or what have you. Those are the only two that I'm really defining right now. Well, other than snake eyes, I suppose. So um, it'll be, uh, in this case, um, st static. Uh, to conform to the event handler uh, generic delegate, it's void. I'm going to give it an identifier, my dice underscore, I'll call it special roles, or special role perhaps. Um, and then again, the event, the event arguments uh, generic specifies that it should be uh, an object. I'm going to call it source, I suppose, um, followed by... It was our dice roll event arguments. Okay, so that was for, that matches up with those two events. Okay. And all I really need to do in here is display some information about the event. So um, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna write uh, whatever the message was Okay, for the dice uh, event argument, so that'll say box cars or natural or whatever. Um, and then I want to also display the the actual value of the dice, so uh, die one and slash die two in brackets here. So source as dice because it's it's a it's just an object. So source as dice dot die one, uh, which will give me the value of the first dice source as dice dot die two will give me the value of the second die. So I've got this one actual handler. Uh, I want to wire both of those events, both of my new events to that handler. So I'm scrolling up into uh, main here and uh, underneath where it says uh, part three multipurpose event handlers, write one handler to, uh, it should say wire, but uh, wire one handler to rolled seven and rolled 12 events. So right underneath that, that's where I'll, we'll add the code to do that. Okay, so my dice dot rolled seven plus equals my dice special roll and the same thing for rolled 12. So both of those events will call that same event handler. The event handler will do something slightly different uh, with those events based on the fact that they have different dice roll event arguments. Okay, so let's try that out. Okay, so our snake eyes is still happening. Uh, here I've got natural will come up quite a bit because it's uh, statistically what you're going to roll a seven more often than anything else, right? Most, co most more combinations for a seven than anything. Okay, so lots of naturals and we can see that working. More naturals, another snake eyes, natural, natural. Ah, there's a boxcars finally. Okay, so a little bit more uh, rare 
a couple of box cars. Okay, so there we have it. All right, so the, the purpose of this video again was to look at how to set things up so that you can use one event handler for more than one event. Okay, and, and to set that up properly in our class, um, one of the things that we did is we used the event handler generic uh, delegate rather than creating our own uh, very specific delegate to handle, to actually represent the event. Thank you very much.